I needed to cut a tree that's on the other side of a chain link fence. And I want to cut it even with the chain link fence. So I went and bought this pole saw. It's 1.5 peak horsepower. It's electric. I actually prefer the electrics because I don't use them very often. And it doesn't seem like I want to go through managing the gas, the gas storage, things like that. Seven amps. It's nine and a half foot tall. The handle, telescopes, so you can make it longer and shorter for easier management. And that's eight foot, 10 inches. So it's pretty basic. It's a chainsaw on a pole. <laughs> pretty simple. Uh, it has a protector, which I actually recommend you use. It might say cutting your hands or something. And it has a way to put in chain oil. So here's your warning to fill it full of oil. So it, of course it comes fully retracted. So this is how you lock and unlock the telescope. Uh, you turn it this way to unlock. There we go. And then you turn it this way to lock it back in place. Pretty simple method. And it has a safety and a trigger. Pretty standard arrangement. So we've got a chain and a bag. A protector once we get it together. And the bar. It's in a bag, believe it or not. Of course, it comes with a manual, 56808. My favorite part of the manual. If I, have, if I ever have a problem, I'm going to need this. And it gives the parts. Uh, the parts are kind of a mixed blessing. The bolts are good. You can get the size. But pieces like pump body, well, you're not going to be able to make that. You're going to have to go buy it from somebody. Uh, and Harbor Freight does carry some spare parts. Not a lot, but some. Okay, the cover. I'm going to take this off. They give you an Allen key for it. <clears throat> Make sure it's fully inserted or you're around the tips. Don't want that. It's the first step to it not working at all. Get your big chain out. And it comes a little pre-oiled. Okay, the simple way to figure out how this is, is you look at these links right here. These are the cutting links. So the cut is in this space right here on the front end of the back of that link. And that link goes forward and cuts. So you want to always face that forward. So I actually want to put it like this so that as it rotates, that's what goes out and cuts. Okay, spread the tip, put a couple of those links down in, then you can go like that. Okay, this is a case where the saw doesn't match the manual. The manual shows a sprocket here with normal teeth, very definable teeth. This does not have that. This has a sprocket that fits like this. These fit down in a hole in each of these, and then this spins and rotates the chain. It's a little different, but in reality, it's not that different. Okay, this is where fun starts. You have got to get this bolt so that it's here. So I've got to take that screw and move that down so it goes on there. Once it's in and mounted, then I can use that screw to push it back out. But, I've got to get it in the right place first. So that's going to have to come back to about here. So the other end of your Allen key is a flat tip screwdriver. So you want to put that on. And this is what I would call loosening the bolt. If you're looking for direction. And you can see that that pin is sliding down that screw. I hope that's a hardened screw because that's going to have some heavy load on it to make this thing work. Okay, so I want to do that. I'm going to move that down until it's as far down as it can go and it doesn't run out of the end. It doesn't release this. So let's try this. So I'll put that on. And actually they got the measurements about right because you have to loosen it all the way. Normally the sprocket has pins that go in between that and pull it around. And this is the exact opposite. The actual link goes down in holes in the side of the sprocket. There's two ways to do this. I can try to adjust the tension like it is right now. Or I can put this on, lock it in place, 
so the saw is held together, then turn it over and do that. I think I'm gonna try this method. I think I like it better. Uh, I gotta make sure that sprocket's on right before I do this though. So, so I've gotta get under there and tighten that now. It's like you're tightening it, so you turn it the same way you would tightening a screw. So there, it's starting to get tight, and I wanna go a little further. So that's gonna hold on okay while we look at it. It's a little awkward to get in there with this tool. I don't know if it would be any less awkward with a regular screwdriver, though. Now, the box said 7 amps. The saw says 6.5. It's a creative amp count that Harbor Freight uses. Okay, so as you can see, there's a, still a lot of flex in that. I've got to tighten it to show you how it works. Looking at this, you can see that this went in the space. This one went in the hole. This one went in the space. This one went in the hole. So just line them up so you have one there, and they should be okay. They're all the same, so I don't think you can get them lined up wrong. To be sure, one's in a space, one fits in the hole, space, hole. And you can move it a little, but you can't move it a lot. So you can see that working, alternating going in and out of those holes. It's a little different sprocket, but it works just fine. This piece has tabs here and back here. And they go in, and that one doesn't go down until you tighten it up. Kind of strange, but it'd be good. And like I said, I think I like this a little looser. This one might damage the chain. It's that tight. So let's loosen it. Okay, you'll get used to the adjustment. The manual says this is two to four millimeters. And that is two to four, but I still think it's a, just a tiny bit tight. So I'm going to loosen it a little. Ah, that's what I like. You pull this and the inside teeth don't leave the bar but it makes the chain as loose as it's gonna get. When I go outside and start using this, I'll use it for about five minutes, and I'll check this, because all of these rivets will set in, the, in their furthest open position, so this will increase. If those guide teeth can come out of the bar, this needs tightened. If it comes off, the manual warns you that it can hurt you. Well, if it's close to you, it can, but at the end of a nine-foot pole, maybe not but you still don't want that to happen. You want the saw to work correctly all the time. The last two chainsaws I bought from Harbor Freight, the Bauer and the Portland, came with chain oil. This does not. You have to keep that with chain oil or you can damage your chain. Okay, in terms of capacity of this tank, if you fill that all the way up, they're saying you have 20 to 25 minutes of cutting before it's empty. I'm looking at their handy dandy extension cord sizing. This is seven amps, so it fits between six and 10. 25 foot, I need 18 gauge. 50 foot, I need 16 gauge. So I've got 14 gauge, so I went beyond that. That's good. This 14 gauge, if you look at that, can go 25 feet at 12 to 16, but when you go to 50 foot, it needs a 12. So you can only use this for say 12 amps because it's gonna be 50 foot cord regardless of what you're using. So I'm gonna go outside and we're going to cut a tree. Hey guys, so I'm gonna do a summary of this. I got it all together. I used it completely collapsed so I didn't have to extend it any to get to where I wanted, although it was a little bit of a reach. Uh, it worked out well. It worked exactly how it's supposed to work. This does have a safety switch. Someone complained about a safety switch like this on one of the other tools I reviewed, and they said if it has that, they won't buy it because it causes fatigue and other problems. That is a safety switch so that it doesn't come on accidentally and cut you. Now, if you want to run the saw without that, go ahead and disable it, whatever you want to do. But I do not recommend that. It's there for a reason. You will benefit from it. <clears throat> now, in the manual, it says you want to provide strain relief for this cable. So, so you should take this and put it through here. 
and that provides your strain relief. The problem with this, that's not what that's really for. That hook is for is to provide stress relief for your extension cord. What you do is you go back a ways and you press it through there. There's a hole right on the end. Okay, so put it on the hook like this, plug this in. Okay, now the handle is keeping the cord with you, not just this connection. A lot of people tie these two cables in a double knot to hold it, but this is the preferred method. I don't know why they're saying provide stress relief here. That just doesn't make sense. Very strange that the manual does that. This is what you should be doing to keep your cable from becoming disconnected as you move with it. I paid $69 plus 15% uh, off some coupon sale they were having. Uh, very much worth it to me. To me, that's not a lot of money to have this on hand and I can comfortably trim taller trees. To me, it's a good value, works well. Okay, so if you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.